Hey, so we are at WordCamp EU in Berlin, and uh, this is the uh, introduction for uh, an amazing interview with uh, Frank Robinson. That was pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. We're on, what, episode 24 now? I think so, yeah. And this uh, interview you recorded at WordCamp Atlanta? WordCamp Atlanta, um, and I had an awesome conversation with Frank. He was, uh, as everyone is, uh, especially someone who runs an agency like uh, Frank Robinson, uh, he was in incredibly busy at WordCamp Atlanta, but took the time to chat with me. And um, yeah, he's got kind of a unique story about, uh, um, so, so Tim introduced me to Frank okay. and, uh, and said you, you have to have a conversation with him because Frank just spontaneously came up to Tim uh, Cantrell who is in our customer service team and said uh, that WordFence literally saved his, his business. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool, but I mean it sounded like a lot, you know, but when I had this conversation with Frank, it became clear that that was actually the case. Yeah. And uh, you know, we, t we talked about a lot. We talked about uh, Atlanta and what an amazing city it is and how it's been growing over the years. Um, and uh, how culturally vibrant it is and so on. Um, yeah, and then we got on to talking about what, what happened to him and what happened to 70 websites that he managed. And I won't kind of ruin the interview, but it's a, it's a pretty amazing story. Yeah, and I also really love the, the part of the interview where he talks about why he chose to just focus on one vertical yeah. for his business yeah. and why that really mattered to the success of his agency. That was really awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. And you know, as, a, as an entrepreneur myself, um, that really resonated with me. It seemed really smart. Um, and uh, well, again, you know, I don't want to spoil the interview, but uh, I, I, would, I would encourage uh, other entrepreneurs and folks who run agencies in particular to really pay attention to that because I think it's a super smart move um, to kind of focus on a, on a narrow vertical and Frank really goes into that. So uh, without further ado, uh, here is uh, Frank Robinson. My name is Frank Robinson, and I'm the CEO of Salon Media 22. Yeah, I founded the company about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and as a result of creating Salon Media 22, um, it had just changed my whole world and my whole perspective on web designing and technology. Prior to that, I was just a freelance developer working on you know, different projects and what have you. And one of the things that I realized is that I'm competing against so many other freelance developers. So um, decided to kind of just concentrate on one channel. And at first it was um, musicians. And musicians, you know, they don't have money or really didn't at the time saw the value in you know, having a website and all this other stuff. There was SoundCloud and Facebook, like why do I want to pay you to do a site when I can market myself through those platforms? So decided to concentrate on the beauty industry, so I created Salon Media 22, and it's, uh, uh, in the beginning, it was kind of trying to find our way, you know, come up with the right, you know, solution for our our customers. and. Um, but, you know, 10 years ago, it was rough. Now we have, you know, f 500 subscribers, you know, salon professionals, uh, um, beauty suppliers, um, hair care manufacturers. So um, uh, we are at a point now where we're about to really scale, you know, so the pivot is what keeps me up at night, you know, trying to, you know, uh, uh, come up with the right solution to really get on a lot of people's radar. So um, that's a little bit about me and the company, uh, well, about the company. Personally, you know, I'm really laid back, you know. Uh, I know we started right before we started filming talking about Atlanta. I mm. love Atlanta. Uh, I love Atlanta. So, uh, have you been in Atlanta your whole life? No, um, I'm originally from Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. and what brought you here? My mom, my mom is in the medical field and yeah. she had an opportunity, uh, she took a job position down here in Atlanta and um, we loaded up the car in the U-Haul and we moved down here in uh, 79, 80, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it was a big culture shock. Really? You know, yes. Way. 
Um, just, uh, you know, uh, the part of Pennsylvania that we're from, right outside of Pittsburgh, it wasn't as many people of color, you mm -hmm. know. So when you get down here and you just see nothing but just all different types of people, mm. people of color. Mm. It's one of the things I found about Atlanta is mm -hmm. it's a really diverse city. Yes, yes. And it's it's becoming more and more diverse, right? And um, and that's, I think that's what makes Atlanta just a beautiful city. Mm -hmm. The different, you know, cultures, the different, you know, mix of people, the, the different food experiences that you can have here. You know, you can get Russian, you can get Indian. You can get, you know. Yeah, there's a, there's a place down the way here. Uh -huh. It's about two blocks down here. It's called a mark, something market. Yes, the curb uh, market. Yeah, and I went looking for batteries, you know, <laughs> but I, I ended up there. And um, oh my goodness, the, the yes. food and so on. I just wanted to hang out there and yes. buy groceries and maybe have a meal. Yes, I mean, that's one of the things that uh, being here in Atlanta for so long and uh, seeing the evolution of the city, you know, um, is this amazing. And then um, I, I do a lot of things within the city in the Beltline. I do a lot of activities on the Beltline and um, I try to keep myself in the know of where the city is headed. And, and how's it changed over the years? Um, well, the fact that 7,000 people a week move to Atlanta what? in the metro area. Why? What brings them here? Um, opportunity, the weather, the mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. you know, you can literally come here in Atlanta and plant your flag and just take off, you know. The opportunity here is just tremendous, you mm -hmm. know. Um, now we have a thriving movie community here. Oh, really? You know, there's a lot of movies that are created and, and shot here. That's driving a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. We have a large technology you know, uh, 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 ec ecosystem here, I think, right? You you can find any kind of resource as it pertains to technology, you know, from web developers to app developers to um, um, creative content writers. So Atlanta is becoming a movie, a movie hub in a technology hub of the South, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's one primary reason why a lot of people come here is just the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, the people here are, I, I guess you could call it Southern hospitality. Yes. But yes. they are so friendly. Yes. Um, we were here last year for WordCamp. Okay. And uh, we threw a sort of an after after party, which went until about 3 a.m. in a hotel suite. Okay. And it was a lock picking party. Okay. Uh, and it was really fun. I honestly, I wish I had a camera back then because it was so great. But the friends that I made then, um, you know, I've met a lot of them this WordCamp. Mm -hmm. But you just, uh, the people here are so easy to connect with. Yes. Um, yes. So friendly. And I think that's just a part of the South, right? You know, and especially what's unique about Atlanta is, you know, the whole phrase about Atlanta, we're too busy to hate, right? And, and, <laughs> I love that. And, and, that's, and that's true, you yeah. know. I think um, um, the history, you know, with Dr. King and the civil rights, you know, being the, you know, the epicenter. And the, the city is too busy to hate, you know. I I do a lot of work out of coffee shops, right? Mm -hmm. um, I used to too, yeah. And it's amazing. Um, and I think, I, I, you know, I think somebody needs to do a book on the different types of coffee shops that you can work out of. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I do certain coffee shops based on the mood that I'm in. It's just like music for some reason, uh -huh. right? Is this, um, but you notice, you know, uh, the fact that I'm out in public a lot, you know, every, uh, you can't make eye contact without saying hello mm. or good morning or mm. good afternoon, mm. you know. And, and the nice thing about this town is you always get a really friendly response. You always get a friendly response, right? And it's genuine. It's just not yeah. like, you know. Uh, Salesy or yeah. kind of fake or anything yeah. like that, you know. It's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a genuine um, hospitality down here, you know, Agreed. and and I uh, I can't see you know living anywhere else for you know uh, for the foreseeable future, right? But uh, um, if you can get past the hot summers, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. and now we don't even really have winters anymore. This this past uh, 
winter, we had maybe one or two really, really cold days, mm -hmm. you know, so. Oh, they canceled winter, huh? Yeah, uh, winter is officially canceled, <laughs> okay. you know, because uh, uh, I don't ever remember going through the winter and not having Atlanta shut down for, you know, a week okay. because of snow or ice. Or oh, whatever. really? Yes. So it actually snows here? I, yeah, I didn't every, know that. every it'll snow and it'll hang around for, you know, two or three days. Yeah. And people will freak out. And, um, but it's, it's fun. But if, if you don't mind the, you know, the, the, the hot August and September and, um, then I think a city is the best city on the planet. Mm -hmm. Atlanta is, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So, so you run Salon Media 22, mm -hmm. and you're the CEO yes. and the founder. Yes. And um, do you have some folks that work with you? Um, I have um, three or four people that I outsource out to. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I guess a couple years ago, well, maybe a, 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 a last year, I decided to do more lean scaling, right? Mm -hmm. And the whole philosophy around lean scaling is doing more with less. Okay. So I have a group of people that I would reach out to to do um, um, some maybe developments on certain projects, and when those projects are over, you know, um, 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 that interaction between them are over. So at one point I did have, you know, three or four salespeople, had a project manager, and it really didn't make sense, you know. So now I could just literally outsource out the things that I need, whether if it's content, whether if it's, you know, a developer, whether if it's somebody that does marketing. Mm -hmm. And I can stay to my primary goal, my, my primary uh, role, which is being the creative force behind Salon Media 22. We do some phenomenal apps, the look and feel, the user experience. And also I can concentrate on this, you know, the scaling strategy, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. in the direction that I want to take the company mm -hmm. and um, outsource out all the other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have a very specific vertical. Um, mm -hmm. Remind me, so it's, it's salons and you mentioned, I think, a couple other things? Yeah, it's the, it's the beauty industry. The beauty so, industry in so one of the things that I um, encourage, you mm -hmm. know, um, uh, WordPress developers or freelancers, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, allow yourself to kind of um, drift into one channel. To because, specialize yeah, in a, it's a specialized, space. right. Mm -hmm. Because then you become the subject matter, you know, um, a master of that, you know, that particular space. You can come up with solutions for your customers because you understand their business challenges, mm -hmm. you know, and that, you know, allowed us to kind of grow. You know, we could, the fact that we understand the beauty industry, we understand the challenges that beauty manufacturers, uh, hair care manufacturers have, you know, we understand their distributors that distribute the products to salon professionals. Mm -hmm. We understand their challenges that they have. And then we understand the salon professional, the lady that does your hair, and their clients, you know, a better way for them to kind of connect and to engage one another. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that we like to call it is like an ecosystem and the fact that we, you know, understand, you know, from a high level to that ground level allows us to develop our platform to really help them yeah. grow their business yeah. and build their brand. I think that's so smart. You know, and when we first started chatting yesterday, mm -hmm. and you mentioned that that was your space, um, it, it immediately just intuitively struck me as, as a, a really smart idea because, um, and, I, and I think you kind of already said this, but you're understanding your customers at a deeper level. You're not just um, seeing yourself as a web developer or as an agency that is you know, flinging up websites for people and that, you know, all websites are equal mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. oh, don't worry, we'll just figure out what copy you want on the site and mm -hmm. what images you want on the site, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can go way deeper than that because yes. all of your customers are in the same space, yes. so you understand uh, how branding is done, yes. uh, what messaging on these sites generally look like, what works, what doesn't work, yes. and so on, and what their specific needs are in terms of why they even have the site. Yes. So when you're implementing it, you're not just, you know, following it up a site, you're yes. adding so much more value, right? Absolutely. And that's the 
that's the key. You want to, you know, you bring value to your customer, and that's what they're really paying you for. It's, they're mm -hmm. not really paying you for the time it takes for you to develop a site. They're paying you for your value, mm -hmm. you know, and your experience and what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And it makes your life a lot easier, you know, when you deal with a specific channel because you understand everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're building sites for a plumber and then, you know, a small business dry cleaner or what have you, you know, from a development and design, you know, you have to learn what they do in order for you to deliver a high-end product, right? Yeah. If if you don't, you know, it's not going to go off well, right? Yeah. And if you understand them, you can develop products and, and platforms that really, really help them grow. Yeah, you know, build agreed. Their brand, you know? I, I think it's, it's so smart, and I've seen so few um, agencies yeah. do this that, to be honest with you, if I was going to start an agency tomorrow, uh -huh. I, I would I would steal this idea because as I think about it, there there are so many verticals out there, and you're you're just mentioning something like dry cleaners yeah. or yes. nail salons or yes. you know et cetera et cetera, right? Yes. And um yes. and they're huge. Yes. I mean, if you look at them, if you just look at the U.S. market or even the Atlanta market yes. in certain spaces, there are so many. Yes. And if you're the guy that handles websites, um, you know, and everything else that goes with that, copy branding, et cetera, yes. SEO for that space. Why would they go anywhere else? And you rise above the noise. What I mean by that is, Agreed. you know, your potential customers love the, at least they love the fact with us that that's all we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't do anything but, you know, platforms for the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. And when you have that, that's that sets you apart from everybody else, you mm -hmm. know, because we understand them. For sure. And then we have a large body of work that they can, you know, look at and see and and see the success that we have with their, you know, that we develop for our clients. So. That are in exactly the same business as they absolutely, are. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, and that's how, believe it or not, uh, just to back ourselves into how I got familiar with WordFence. Mm -hmm. So years ago, uh, we were cloning our salon sites, yeah. okay? So hairstylists and barbers, we would have one primary design, we would clone it, and then change out the images and the colors, you know, to give it some uniqueness mm -hmm. and um, be on our way. So it was easy for us to kind of get these sites up and going. And one of our clone master sites had a malware virus on it. Oh, no. So here I am cloning it over and over again, uh, no. right? Do, doing the work for them, right? <laughs> doing the work for them. <laughs> How much they pay you. <laughs> and, and, and I'm cloning it and cloning it, and I think I must have cloned it maybe like 70 times. Oh. And let me tell you something, Mark. I can remember me and my mom were going back home. This is uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. I was going back home to visit my grandmother. This is over the 4th of July weekend. And I started getting calls from my clients on the road, right? Like, hey, you know, something is screwy going on with the site. Wow. So I really couldn't do anything on the road. When I got to the hotel, I fire up my laptop, and sure enough, there was all kind of crazy things going on with all of the sites, oh. you know? And had to literally kind of turn around the next day to get home to kind of you know, mitigate this, right? Wow. And um, ironically enough, uh, they, it was the Base 64 virus, I believe it was, and they, it kind of just, they planned it perfectly to happen over a long 4th of July weekend, right? And now so- They tend to do that, don't they? And they tend to do that, and uh, got home, uh, you know, tried several things to kind of clean the site up. Uh, long story short, came across you guys. You know, and you were able to kind of clean everything up, secure, you know, my master clone site. And I was able to, to kind of rebuild most of the sites. I've lost some customers behind that. Mm -hmm. But what that taught me is that you have to think about security in the forefront. You know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of, uh, you know, smaller developers really don't, you know, pay attention to the importance of it. You know, had I had, um, and it was a valuable learning experience for me, you mm -hmm. know. I had to have gone through that. I've learned so much about that, mm -hmm. right? 
And um, now that I, you know, use her product, um, I can sleep at night because I know that, you know, my sites are well protected. Um, I'm not going to have to worry about getting that call like, hey, you know, I get this malware detected screen that, you know, a client will send me, right? Um, and um, it allows me to kind of concentrate on my business and I'm not worrying about, you know, the security aspect of, of wow. my sites. So. I must admit I'm a a little emotional, actually. <laughs> um, you know, I, I created WordFence because my site got hacked. Okay. And uh, I was uh, hacked by the Tim Thumb vulnerability back in 2011. And um, it was, uh, I know how it felt. You know, it wasn't a good feeling. And um, it's kind of a long story, and you know, I'll, I'll share it with you sometime. But mm -hmm. just hearing you kind of tell the same story but from an agency perspective where it was did you say 70 websites that yes. were impacted yes um, it's sort of the same thing but times 70 which is um, crazy you know yeah. and uh, I mean the impact to your business it sounds like was profound and the fact that we're able to help I mean that's that's why we do this you know yeah. it's um, I mean there's a lot to running a business as you know but at the end of the day you kind of have a, a mission yeah yeah. And your, you know, our mission is to um, keep uh, keep keep not just websites safe, but keep businesses safe. Yes. Yes. Um, and the people behind them, and the customers yeah. that use them. And so to hear a story like that for me is really impactful. It's um, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so important. I mean, these sites that we build for people, it's their livelihood, right? Mm. And that's the worst call I think a web developer or an agency wants is, hey, my site is down. Mm. You know. Whether if you have one or ten thousand, you, you know, every developer does not like that call or email, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and especially if it's something you could have done to kind of um, um, prevent that from happening, right? And now that we are scaling, you know, security is a big, big factor, and um, you know, uh, when I look back on it, you know, now, um, yeah, it was, you know, a you know, three hour a day sleep for, you know, a week, you know, pleading with customers to, you know, to hang in there with us, right? Wow. And uh, um, it's a learning experience and it's something that we had, you know, had to, you know, go through and get through. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just made us stronger, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. So we changed something a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and we started connecting with our customers a lot more and, and um, mostly at WordCamps actually, okay. really connecting with the community and talking to customers one-on-one -on -one and really understanding their needs and one of the things we learned is that to manage as many websites as you're managing mm -hmm. is a real challenge with WordFence and so we, we dropped everything and we built WordFence Central which lets you manage all of the websites mm -hmm. that you're securing in mm -hmm. one place and see all of the events in one place and configure them all in one place. And um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if you're using Central or not. Have you given it a try? I, I will be giving it a try. Mm -hmm. You know, I got exposed to it um, uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I've, I've gone mm -hmm. to the site and, and didn't get a chance to kind yeah. of get into it. And it only launched a few months ago. So okay. you know, okay. it's, it's kind of new for our, our user community. Okay. Um, and uh, but I think it would really help uh, reduce your workload. As simple as that. And what we're really putting our energy into now is alerting and improving the signal to noise ratio. Okay. Because what we've realized is that if you're constantly getting alerts and they all kind of have, it's it's not clear what is the true emergency yes. and what is just something you need to take care of. Yes. You you begin to get numb. Yes. And that's one of the worst things that can happen in security. You yes. Know, you you want to know that if your phone beeps or you get a certain kind of email or some other message that there are certain messages where you need to start sprinting. Yes. Right. And yes. there's others where you can, you can get to it when you get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a plug, like a, your, a plug in needs to be updated. Right. Yeah. You know, and you get an alert for that. Right. You know, you know, those are things you could, you know, you know, kind of address. You get to it in a few days yes. and it's not urgent, but yes. if it's a vulnerability. Yes. Right. Th yes. And that's the reason it needs to get updated. Yes. And you know that you're, you're vulnerable. Although, um, we roll out our firewall rules to our premium customers in real time. Mm -hmm. So even if you have a vulnerability in a plugin, you know, we're usually on top of it within a, an hour or two. Right. And um, that will protect your site even if you have a vulnerable plugin. But 
But even so, right, right. that is pretty urgent. Um, I would say perhaps something that is the, the sprinting example, right, where you need to start sprinting, is um, if you malware is detected on your site. Yes. Because then you know that something got through. Yes. And you need to investigate immediately. Yes. So yes. we're working on prioritizing or um, changing our alerting system, right. making it based around central, and then really working on improving that signal to right. noise ratio. Right. And one other thing I, I think will be, and you might already have this feature, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but detecting that you have malware is great, but where did this thing come from, yeah. right? If if somehow right. you know what we was can the vector? yeah what's the vector did mm. this, did this come in through a plugin or did this come in through you know and you know an admin or something weak right because when I was going through that you know uh, 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 um, situation with my server I literally once I got past it like how did this happen right. Mm. And um, how can I, you know, prevent it? And if it happens again, I want to be able to know where these, you know, these things are happening. What was the underlying cause, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And um, and one of the things that I'm looking forward to using Essential, just to go back a little bit, you know, it's our best practice to when we do a site, the first three things that we do after we launch it, one is to install WordFence. Mm -hmm. You know, and then there's some other things that we do. And the fact that now with Central, we could just add that to the Central and be able to monitor that, opposed to going to dashboards, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and checking of things. Of each individual yeah, site, Yeah, right? that's, can you imagine? <laughs> right, you know? and, you, and you're, you've got 500 sites on the We got 500, and there's probably about 40 or 50 that are, you know, what we call, all of our clients are important, but, mm -hmm. you know, they're, you know, 40 or, or so that we keep an eye on every day, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so I'm looking forward to, you know, installing it and uh, beginning to use it, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. that's that's great news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so pleased to hear that we're helping. Yes. And, um, you know, y your goal um, is to not uh, to, to, to kind of make the problem of the website go away for your clients. Yes. Right? They don't have to think about that. They can focus on their business. Yes. And our goal is to make the problem of security go away for you. Yes. And yes. Um, so, you know, we're, I think we're doing a pretty good job. It sounds like we've helped a lot, but you know, we want to we wanna really um, uh, get to the point where you feel like we're taking care of, uh, of the security side of things and we've made it uh, as easy it can, as it can possibly be for, for you to uh, secure those sites that are under your management. Yes. I mean, you, you guys are going to play a very important, you know, role in the growth of Salon Media 22, you know, especially with the lean scaling, you know, um, um, I've resisted hiring somebody that does security mm -hmm. and server management, right? And the fact that we can, you know, essentially outsource that, you know, and that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm then uh, I can concentrate on those things that are going to help us grow, right? Yeah. And it's not to say that one day I will not bring somebody on that, you know, can sip coffee and check the, the WordPress central dashboard, you know, and, you know, says, okay, everything is all good, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, one day I might get to that. But right now I, I, I save so much money because I don't have to do that. You know, I don't have to hire that security person or rely on my hosting company to provide that, you know, that um, um, that value add, right? For and, sure. and, and that comes at a cost when they do that. Anyway, yeah. So. yeah, yeah, and you know, it's really conversations like these and the conversations that, the other conversations that you and I have had that mm -hmm. help guide our thinking in terms of how to, how to best help our, our customers. So I really appreciate the, the input that you've given me. Thanks so yes. much. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, great. Um, Frank, is there anything else that you want to chat about? Uh, no, I, you know, I'm glad that you guys are, are here. You know, I met the, uh, the gentleman last year, and every time I come to Word Defense, I, I may, you know, I look for you guys, and, and I know yesterday I kind of <laughs> I kind of uh, made them laugh when I said, hey, if if I ever have another child, you know, boy or girl, <laughs> the name is going to be Word Fence. You yeah. Know? And, and so. <laughs> and I think I said to you, please don't do that to the poor kids. <laughs> so, so at least, you know, their nickname will be Word Fence or WF, right? Yeah. Or, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but that's, you know, um, 
uh, I look forward to seeing you guys every time I come to, at least the last two years, you, you know, I've, I've uh, come in contact with you and I hope you're here next year. You know, I think we will be because I love Atlanta. Okay, okay. And I love the people of Atlanta. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you guys next year as well. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for the conversation, Frank. Yes. It's been wonderful. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, I really hope you enjoyed the interview with Frank Robinson from Salon Media 22. Uh, we'll post a link to his uh, Twitter and uh, other ways to contact him, including his website and the show notes. Um, Kathy, now that they've seen the interview, um, I got to tell you that you know idea of focusing on a particular vertical, uh, you know, and, and Frank's vertical in particular is the beauty industry. Uh, getting to know it really well, getting to know that specific kind of customer's needs, being able to tailor the product to their needs, super smart, eh? Really smart, and I know there's a lot of other agencies that can learn from that too. So, hope everybody got that from that interview. For sure. All right, well, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're on uh, Apple Podcasts, leave us a review if you like the show. And uh, thanks very much from uh, Berlin, WordCamp EU. Bye, everyone. Auf Wiedersehen.